Clonal Evolution of Tumors Monoclonal Gammopathy in Plasma Cytoma Normal Situation The electrophoresis of serum proteins separates proteins according to size and charge. When stained proteins are measured by densitometry, a typical electrophorogram is obtained. In the section marked by a square, immunoglobulins were separated. To begin with, antibody-producing plasma cells are shown beneath the curve. As depicted here, immunoglobulins are produced normally by many different plasma cell clones. The immune response is polyclonal. Since the immunoglobulins produced by the different plasma cell clones differ in their electrophoretic mobility, the gamma globulin fraction shows up as a broad peak. Monoclonal gammopathy. Plasma cells are antibody producing B lymphocytes. Plasma cytomas are malignant tumors of plasma cells. When the serum proteins of a patient with plasmocytoma are separated by electrophoresis, a slender peak, most often in the range of the gamma globulin fraction, is observed in the electrophorogram. In plasmocytoma, a single B lymphocyte is transformed. From this cell, a plasma cell clone is generated that releases immunoglobulins of identical structure and electrophoretic mobility, shown in red, into the blood. The slender peak in the electrophorogram reflects this fact. The phenomenon is known as monoclonal gammopathy. The monoclonal peak in the electrophorogram shows that with regard to antibody production, all cells of the plasma cell clone are identical because they stem from a single transformed B lymphocyte. The plasma cytoma proves the clonal nature of tumors. Clonal evolution of tumors according to Nowell. In general, several events are needed in the pathway from a normal cell to a malignant tumor. This phenomenon is known as multi-step carcinogenesis. The model of clonal tumor evolution, first suggested by Peter Nowell in 1976, merges the clonal origin of tumors and multi-step carcinogenesis. In this model, a normal cell is hit randomly by an event, for example, a modification of genetic information. In the animation, the cells of the clone formed by this event are marked T1. In comparison with normal cells, T1 cells divide more often and die less frequently by apoptosis, the programmed cell death. One of the T1 clone cells is then hit randomly by a second event, generating the T1 plus 2 clone. The T1 plus 2 clone expands because of more cell divisions and less apoptoses. Consequently, the clone outnumbers the T1 clone. Subsequently, one of the T1 plus 2 clone cells is hit by a third event. The T1 plus 2 plus 3 cell formed has a growth advantage over the previous clones. The clone expands due to an increased rate of cell divisions and a decreased rate of apoptosis. In the course of clonal evolution, malignant tumor cells are generated, characterized by invasive growth and metatastic spread. An important feature of the Nowell model of clonal evolution is the assumption that each cell of a clone has the potential to be transformed by a random event. Clonal evolution of the tumor stem cell. In regenerating tissues such as the intestinal mucosa, differentiated cells are generated from tissue stem cells. In order to self-renew and to produce differentiated progenitors, the tissue stem cell divides asymmetrically. Asymmetric cell division means that one of the two daughter cells remains a stem cell, whereas the second daughter cell divides further. The resulting cells differentiate into different lineages. Asymmetric cell division is guided by the so-called niche, shown here beneath the stem cell. As a result of asymmetric cell division, one daughter cell remains a stem cell and the second cell undergoes a number of cell divisions. Subsequently, the cells differentiate and execute different functions, indicated by different colors. 
The color intensity symbolizes the extent of differentiation. After executing their functions, the differentiated cells die by apoptosis. It has been established that with many tumor types, years or even decades lie between the first damaging event and the clinical diagnosis of a tumor. Considering the clonal origin of tumors, the cell from which the tumor originates must stay in the organism for years. This precondition applies to tissue stem cells. For this reason, it is assumed that many tumors are derived from tissue stem cells. In the present example, a tissue stem cell is hit by a damaging event, for example, a mutation in a critical gene. The damaged tissue stem cell gives rise to a precursor of a tumor cell, here marked T1. Compared to the normal situation, the T1 cells divide more often and reach a lower level of differentiation, symbolized by lighter colors. The rate of apoptosis is lower. These events lead to an increased number of cells which are less differentiated. Considering the multi-step model of carcinogenesis, a tissue stem cell must be hit several times in order to give rise to a full-blown malignant tumor. In the present example, the tissue stem cell ST1, which has already been hit once, is hit by a second event. The progenitors from this stem cell, marked T1 plus 2, divide more often than the T1 cells. In addition, the cells remain less mature and the rate of apoptosis decreases further. As a consequence, this clone outgrows the previous clone. The tissue stem cell is subsequently hit by a third event. Each of the three damaging events is transferred to the progenitor cells, marked T1 plus 2 plus 3. Because of the higher rate of mitoses and the lower rate of apoptosis, this cell clone again outgrows the previous clones. Compared to the previous stages, the cells appear less differentiated. Eventually, a tumor forms, which invades the surrounding tissue and spreads into distant organs.